Hello, everybody. This is Gary. Today is uh, Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. It is 1.56 p.m. Eastern Standard Times in the United States in Rochester, New York. And this is just a quick update on how I'm doing with my mental health and this coronavirus thing. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I have money. I have food. I have a place to live. Um, I'm still able to work from home part time. So things are going pretty good for me right now. I know a lot of other people have it a lot tougher than me and are probably having a lot tougher problems with their mental health because they've lost their jobs, lost their businesses, or are on the verge of losing their job and losing their businesses. Um, in my opinion, the federal government needs to do more to get money out to small businesses who have 500 or less employees because those are the ones that are going out of business. They may be permanently going out of business if they don't get any help soon. Um, I personally am doing fine. I'm still doing consumer surveys online for extra money. It doesn't pay a lot, but it keeps me busy. I'm on Social Security Disability Survivors Benefits um, from when my father passed away in 2005. So I have a steady income. I also have food stamps to help me eat. So I'm doing okay. I'm surviving. I have an appointment with my psychiatrist tomorrow, but it's going to be over the phone. Either that or it's going to be a video conference. But either way, um, they've suspended in-office visits for now. So my psychiatrist will be calling me tomorrow on my phone number that he has on file. And we're going to discuss what's going on with me, what's the best way to deal with my medications. Um, I'll talk to him about my paranoia, which gets pretty bad sometimes. And that's the point where I lose control of my behavior. I, I control myself pretty well. And even when I'm paranoid, I'm pretty sure that no one's actually following me, even though that's what it feels like, or somebody's talking about me, even though that's not really happening, or insulting me, or threatening me. And th those things are actually are not happening, but there's a part of my brain that thinks they are happening. Um, so... My paranoia is a prominent thing in my schizophrenia. Um, and it is schizophrenia that we're talking about in my situation. Um, I'm still struggling with trying to smoke or quit smoking. It's very difficult. I wore a nicotine patch yesterday and the day before, but I was smoking just as much on the patch as if I was off the patch. So I figured if I was gonna continue smoking, I'm just gonna make myself sick. Um, with too much nicotine, so I took the patch off, and I don't know when I'm going to be able to try to quit smoking again. It's very, very difficult. I'm very, very addicted to cigarettes. I'm not addicted to a lot of things in my life. I don't like alcohol. I don't drink. I don't use any other drugs. I don't even take Clonopin anymore because the psychiatrist won't give it to me. But I do have cigarettes, and I smoke way too much, much more than one pack a day. And so it's getting completely out of control, it's spiraling out of control, and I don't know how to stop it. So I'm gonna wait a few more weeks and give it another try at quitting because I just don't think I can do it right now. Um, and it is a big problem for me because I don't want to die. I don't certainly don't want to die from the slow suffocation of emphysema like my father did from smoking too much. Um, my father was a, well, I don't know if he was a heavy smoker. He smoked a lot and um, it depends on your definition of heavy smoker, but the point is he didn't develop lung cancer or cancer as far as I know. I think it was emphysema and heart disease that killed my father from cigarettes. Um, he had quit for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years of his life, but by then the damage was already done. And I'm sort of like in the same situation, only a little bit worse because I'm smoking even more than my father did. So I'm still struggling with that. Um, not much else going on. Um, I went to the store today to get some hand sanitizer at Walgreens. The only thing they had available was this big bottle, plastic bottle in the background here, right here. Um, that That's a pretty big bottle of uh, hand sanitizer. I didn't really need that big a bottle, but that's all they had. They had them behind the cashier counter, and they only handed out one at a time to each customer. Uh, each customer is only allowed to buy one bottle of hand sanitizer. I was a surprised that I could find it at all. I went in the Walgreens, looked in the section where most hand sanitizers would naturally be, 
and they were all out. So just on a whim, I decided to ask the store manager if they had hand sanitizer, and they did behind the counter at the checkout, and you were only buy, allowed to buy one bottle at a time. So maybe the hoarding that people have been doing is letting up a little bit. The fact that I can find any hand sanitizer at all is a good sign that maybe people are stop panic buying and starting to be more rational and reasonable about the things they're buying at the store. Um, but uh, that bottle is a little bit too big to carry around with me, though, outside. Um, and I do go outside with a mask because um, I am a heavy smoker. And if you think about it, they say people with pre-existing conditions will get sicker faster from the coronavirus, COVID-19. And um, I have a pre-existing condition in the fact that I'm a smoker and my lungs are damaged from that. So if I got pneumonia from coronavirus, I may not turn out of it that well if I got infected with it. Because smoking is definitely something that destroys your lungs. And coronavirus is something that attacks your lungs and causes you to get pneumonia. And I don't know if I'd be able to survive pneumonia. Um, so I'm nervous about that. It's kind of anxious. But uh, like, comment, subscribe, share. I don't ask for money to make these videos because I really don't need to make any or have any money to make these videos. Um, I have all the financial support I need. Um, but if you want to help me out, share these videos on Facebook and other social media sites that you're connected to, like Twitter, if you want to help me out. And um, press the notification bell below. I think it's on oops, this side of the screen. I'm not used to this. I just look a mirror. Um, but on this side of the screen, there's a notification bell below the video. Make sure you press that, even if you're subscribed, because you may not get notification when I put out a new video. And take care of yourself and each other in this coronavirus time. Be careful.